Soft on crime policies grabbing the attention of a top Democrat after a hatchet wielding madman was allowed to walk free out of jail. Shocking video shows a suspect grabbing an axe and going on a rampage to a Manhattan McDonald's. He was arrested, but neither charge he's facing was eligible for bail under New York's lenient criminal justice reforms. The suspect addressing critics saying, quote, everybody's talking about how I should be in jail. I did my 18 hours, bro. What else do you want? Why do I have to be in jail? I'm not unhinged. I'm not psychotic. I just did what anybody would do when being pummeled. Wow. And New York Governor uh, Kathy Hochul trying to act tough on crime by calling out Manhattan's liberal DA Alvin Bragg over the matter. Many players in a criminal justice system, starting with the arresting officers who determine what charge to bring, as well as a district attorney who will decide whether or not to stay with that course or to have an upcharge from what is recommended. We're actually asking what the thought process was in the decisions that were just made because we have a question about it because they have the discretion to uh, charge uh, in a different way that would make them bail eligible. Judge, she, uh, the governor is singing, a, 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 I think some have wanted her to a, a, conduct herself this way. Do you believe what she's saying now is genuine? I think she's worse than Cuomo. Wow. And I got to tell you, what she's trying to do is she's trying to blame the district attorney. When the truth is, look, this guy is charged with criminal possession of a weapon and criminal mischief, both at misdemeanors. The criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. If he has a prior conviction, which the New York Post reports he has, then it's third degree, and then it makes it a violent felony. But we don't know if that's the case. But criminal mischief is charged as a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor is $250. He definitely did the felony criminal mischief, which is, I think, $1,500. So the DA charged lower probably than he could have, but it wouldn't have made a darn bit of difference as it relates to bail. That's her problem. Right. That's her issue. If she had any honesty, she would say we have got to change the bail laws because of my and my party's decision to have social justice and bail for everybody. This guy walked out and I can guarantee you, Harold, they gave him his ax back. All right, she is the one person who has the power to remove him from office. So and for those people who are thinking this is more than just criminal mischief, which is a da damaging property and possession of a hatchet, this is taking a hatchet against people, it's attempted assault, it's attempted murder. No, I got to agree with Bragg there. I would have upped it by a degree, but there's no assault here. He didn't assault anyone with it. So the governor is looking to blame the DA. We can blame Bragg on a lot of stuff, but not on this one. It's all in your bailiwick, governor, and stop blaming other people. Jesse, should we have a law that you should not be able to take an axe and wield it in McDonald's? I think that ought to be one of the things that'll get at the state level. That's, Maybe know, he I'd... was having a Big Mac attack, Harold. You don't <laughs> actually know. His story is full of holes, and here's how I know why. He said they wouldn't let him use the bathroom. I'm 43 years old. If I am denied a trip to the bathroom... I have to go to another bathroom immediately. <laughs> I can't hold it and mess around and play with a tomahawk for a long time. I have to go right away. That's how I know he's not telling the truth. What actually happened was he reeked of alcohol, got denied when he made a pass at a girl, hit somebody, and then he got ganged up on. Yep. He was getting pummeled by a McFlurry of punches. <laughs> he's obviously unhinged. You don't go out and you say, I'm not unhinged. That means you're unhinged when you say that. Then he says, the hatchet isn't for people, it's for trees and vehicles. How many trees have you seen around New York City? Not a lot. And what do you mean it's for vehicles? What, is he going to fix a car tire with a hatchet? So obviously it's for people. Then he says, these people weren't lucky because I decided I didn't want to hit him in the throat with a hatchet. So, like, he's playing God. And then he says, crime's always been bad. It was actually worse a long time ago because 10 years ago, he got hit in the head on the corner with a hammer. That probably means he's mentally ill. How do they not bump up the charge? And how does anybody in their right mind see a, a video like this and not apply for a concealed carry permit the next day? Because that's what I want to do. I look at this. I'm never going to McDonald's again. I'm probably going to seamless. And the fact that Joe Biden is coming to New York City tomorrow... And the White House hasn't been asked about a viral machete, axe attack, tomahawk, whatever you want to call it. 
How does he not get asked about that? It's amazing how they're covering this thing up. The city looks like the shining now, and the Democrats don't even have to pay a price for it. Dana, you don't, you don't look like a big McDonald's goer like I am, but if you were a McDonald's person, could you see yourself going There's back? There's no place and what's better the to get a Diet Coke than McDonald's, 100%. Here, that's, here. All, that's absolutely true. That's they, they have the, why? <laughs> Well, you're getting a diet drink. A diet coke. I know. I know. I got, I'm, I'm over a certain age, so I got to think about those things. Um, I was remembering last week when the CEO of McDonald's gave a speech in Chicago, and he said, "Us, our corporation is staying here. This is not just because like, we will we'll always be here. It's not unconditional." And he said, "Employees that work at his restaurants are being harassed." And we know that that is true in New York and probably in many other cities across the country as well. I really feel for the workers. These are people that are trying to make an honest living. They are doing a job uh, that maybe that maybe it's like to get uh, crawl up the ladder. Maybe that's their first rung on the ladder, and they're working at McDonald's. That's a great place to start. My sister started there, and it was a really good experience. I think there's a lot of people now who wouldn't want their kids to be there because of this kind of behavior. So uh, th that's also happening at Starbucks. Starbucks is starting to close locations mm -hmm. because their staff is being harassed. Just over here the other day, uh, my assistant went to help Bill Hemmer and goes over there. It's 6.30 in the morning, and... A homeless guy comes in, takes all the drinks that are set up for people to pick up, that have called in, you know, on their app, <laughs> takes them all and <laughs> runs them all you over the floor. And so the, all the baristas had to get down on the floor. Caroline's up and then pick the stuff up off the floor. And I, who would go there? Who would work there? And I think that we're on a real dangerous, slippery slope here if we don't get a handle on the crime in the city for the actual workers who come to work every day and try to do these businesses. Greg, I know you share that view, but you had some other views in the green room you were sharing around well, around this crime. I just have to correct you on the story. Steve Ducey isn't homeless. He was just very, <laughs> very upset. Uh, so this guy's out. I've heard from my sources that he actually moved in with the guy who burned down our Christmas tree. <laughs> this is my point being is that guy is out. You can see the guy who burned down the Fox Christmas tree anytime you want. And that, to me, is worse than this because arson, I mean, that could have, yeah. it, it could have yeah. killed a ton yeah. of people, but he's out. So I guess what I'm looking, like, I looked at this and I go, boy, am I jaded? Yeah. I'm so jaded because the guy sounds like he's not as crazy as everybody else is. He's maybe carrying a, an axe because somebody else has guns. He's like, you know, I'm going like, man, I've been in New York too long to think that this is okay. <laughs> because I'm looking and I go, yeah, and I'm watching him get beat up. This is not appropriate behavior, my point is. But we've lowered the bar for acceptable, appropriate behavior in the city in the absence of visible law enforcement and the amplifi amplification of conflict. You know, we, we've, we've lost the ability to kind of, like, negotiate and dialogue. So we have this daily evidence now of uh, reckless, insane behavior. This is just a small piece of it. And when it's the wild, wild west, you know what? People start settling stuff on their own. Yeah. Right. They start like they, they, they have they have vigilantes, cry, homeless people beat up homeless people. It, I mean, it's crazy that when the laws become irrelevant, Things, the lawlessness takes on a weird, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's a fancy word. Patina. Oh, yes. Yes. You, you, yeah, you get machete attacks, subway pushers, you get arson, you get a guy with an ax, you get these insane brawls over cold french fries. You know, that's what happens when all of a sudden chaos becomes the order of the day. You know, so there you go. And I'll the, take two. Yes. I'm getting an axe. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.